بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله ولي الصالحين واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته dear brothers and sisters and welcome to another episode of defense against disaster in the previous episodes we talked about the history of the battle the spiritual battle and how the people who are attacking Islam have changed their techniques and that we need to be updated we said that they become more academic they become they've dug into our scriptures into our texts Bukhari Muslim Ibn Majah At-Tirmidhi Abu Dawood all the books of hadith they have picked them because of course now it's very easily readily available on the internet they have people who know Arabic they've studied Arabic they're Arabs who are not Muslim who are helping them they have come up on satellite TV they're trying to flood the internet YouTube social media with doubts so that you brother and sister might deviate and leave Islam and this is not exaggerated this is nothing you want to do it you want to see it you can find it very easy you probably know in your community some people you saw them coming to Islam and the next thing you know is that they're out and I've met quite a lot of them so we talked about how this started with the battle between Adam and Shaitan the Shaitan whispered doubts into Adam's heart and into Eve and that he packaged the whispers very nicely it was something that ha huh, yeah I should do that it makes sense even though Allah told them not to do it so Allah ordered them not to come close to this tree but Shaitan came and repackaged the whole deal and made it sound very nice and that is why a lot of times this is how we work is Allah orders us not to do something and then we try to well yeah but you know I think I you know I can do this here or there's an exception there or you know I think I, I should do more or less or you know these kind of arguments and this is what makes no sense now if we go back to the history of the battle against truth we find that the people who are on the truth were never really fully embraced especially at the beginning by their people this is just an oft repeated story and trend all the prophets were accused of sorcery evil madness lying even prophet Lut when he was calling his people to truth what do the people said look even truthfulness righteousness was twisted the way they say that these are people that they like to be purified as impurity is something bad because they were dirty what they were doing so you see in the history of this battle truth will be packaged as something dirty as something ugly people will attack you they will try to brainwash you and convince you that ah look the people who hold the truth actually are the liars and this is one of the signs the Prophet Hussein talked about that towards the day of judgment truth will be considered as falsehood and falsehood as truth a liar will be believed and a person who speaks truth and a truthful person will be called a liar look around you brothers and sisters look in the newspapers look who is running the media look what kind of news we get look at all the controversies that are taking place all the conspiracies where are we look at who's speaking usually and what do they say in the end of the day they're trying to convince people that Muslims are a threat a threat to humanity why to stop them from spreading this message to stop to make sure that this message doesn't reach anyone boycott them make sure that they don't get there that they don't reach subhanallah I was seeing a post recently that they were trying to stop one of our dear respected scholars dies and you know the title was saying that protecting people from so and so and then someone replied saying that we are protecting the same people from hellfire subhanallah so we said all prophets were accused of evil and sorcery and madness lying and so on this is nothing new it's called character assassination if you cannot deal with the argument of someone someone comes to an argument you will hit their character you try to poison the well instead of saying ah what he's saying is wrong because of one two three and give a proper proof and rational argument you say ah but you know that this person is crazy is you know he's dealing with magic or he's got he's just extreme and he's got wicked ideas and so on right 
So what happens is instead of dealing with the argument, the person is telling you, brother, sister, look at one, two, three, four. You're directed into a different area and you're not focusing on the argument, you're focusing now on the person. And that's how they try to discredit people because if they can do that, if they can assassinate the character, the person, then people will not look at the argument. They will not look at the message. They cut the message. They lose credibility. They rip the credibility out of them. So if you know that a thief or a person comes to you and say, if they want to talk to you, they say, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know who you are. I don't need to hear from you. You're crazy. That person might be carrying valuable life information and you are not allowing him or her to speak because you were conditioned to believe that this person is not a credible source. That's exactly what is happening. That's exactly the oldest trick in the book. Why do people resist? And why did they resist prophets, for example? Why do people resist dawah? Why do we find that there's so many restrictions? See, because people cannot submit. You find that, again, in the history of mankind, when the messages were sent, why do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent so many messengers? Hundred something thousand prophets or more. Why? Why not one, two? No. See, because people kept changing and changing. Some people accept it, and as time goes on, slowly, slowly, their desires and nafs started realizing, well, I don't know, it's a bit too hard. Let's uh, change a little bit. Let's say uh, this in a different way. How about we change this word a bit and say it in a nicer way so that uh, this guy doesn't get upset. Slowly, slowly, as time passes on, the message changes. Because people do not submit. They can accept it. To them, you know, it's, it's too harsh. You know? I, can't, I don't agree with it. It doesn't make sense to me. But with all respect, it doesn't make sense to you what? Is truth dependent upon you? Upon how you feel? Or is truth inevitably what was revealed? The question is not how you feel about it, whether it is true or not. Whether it's been revealed by God or not. That's what people need to ask themselves. See, if you ask most religions today, and you go and have an argument with someone, or you try to give them down, and you say, why do you reject Islam? They say, oh, you know, you guys don't, you know, it's difficult, you have to do this, and you have to do that. And so you don't like it because you think you cannot do it, or you're not, you don't agree with it. The concept of hijab, right? Most people say, ah, you know, women are oppressed in Islam. Hijab, you know, it's too difficult, right? Well, excuse me, why? Because you think so? Because you don't want to wear it? That's oppressing? No. The question that you should ask yourself is like, is this an order from God or not? Was this revealed from God or not? Doesn't matter what our minds, because you and your friend might think differently, and your neighbor will think differently, and your colleague and your schoolmate will think differently. So then how do we live life with all these different opinions? That's why it's called submission. Submitting your will to the Creator. But wait. How do you know? That can be blind faith, right? No. You see, brothers and sisters, Islam doesn't call you to blind faith. Islam calls you, first and foremost, to have basira, to have certainty. What is that? When you establish 100% that this message is from the Almighty Creator, you know without a doubt, khalas, you've done, you've exerted your brain to understand that these are the proofs from God, that there's no way that this book, this revelation can be from any other human being. As one of the scholars said, the difference between the word of Allah, the Quran, and the words of human beings is like the difference between God and mankind. You understand? Let me repeat that. The difference between the Quran, which is the word of Allah, and any other book that's written by human beings is like the difference between the Creator Himself and human beings, and you and I. Such a huge difference. When you read the Quran, and you find the perfection of it, and you read any other book, and you find the human error, then you notice that it cannot be. Wallahi, if you use a computer, if you use your cell phones, your mobiles, bring up everyone together. And this is not me saying it, Allah is saying it. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأَتُّوا بِسُورَةٍ مِمِثْلِ 
وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ So if you are in doubt about what Allah has revealed, then you produce something like it. And if, if you say the Quran is from human beings, then okay, you can do it as well, because you're a human being. Okay, get your computers, get your Arabic people who are not Muslim, Christians, many of them, and come together, all of you. All of you come together and do it. Make one. One surah like it. One chapter. And they can't. That's the thing. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. I hope they're excited as I am. I hope that you are following up with this. Inshallah, we'll see you after the break. Muhammad. 